Jurassic World Evolution 2's latest DLC, the Cretaceous Predator Pack, has released. And if you want to check out that, go to the video in the link's description and check it out. But if you're here for the free update 8, well, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 video. Your host, Rexy's Gaming Bro, has got you covered as today's video is all about the free update number 8 for Jurassic World Evolution 2. And we're just going to get in straight away and talk about probably the best part for many people, which is the new dinosaur variants. The following dinosaurs have been given their film counterpart skin customizations, much like in the case of Giganotosaurus 2022 slash Dominion, or Dreadnoughtus of 2022 slash Dominion, and many others, but New variants include the Allosaurus of Battle at Big Rock slash Jurassic World Dominion, or as it's stated in the game, 2022. The Dimorphodon, also from Dominion 2022. The Pteranodon of 2001, which is the JP3 variant. The Brachiosaurus of JP3's 2001 as well. And finally, the Stegosaurus of 1997, all equipped with new customizable skins for their film counterparts, not just their Jurassic World ones, which is going to help make the game much better for people who love those models and such. And that m narrows down the list of remaining film species with alternate models to get skin customizations. However, it leaves me saddened because no, no feather T-Rex justice still. It's been almost a year and a, it's been a year and a half actually now that I think about it and still no skin for our furry Rex except for the base one. And also I'm pretty sure Triceratops is also calling. He would like some customizable skins for his model as well. J j just saying Frontier we we love this but the, you're you're forgetting some Frontier Frontier! But anyway, we're gonna move on to the next portion, which is of the pre-built layouts, which this portion of the update allows you to go into any of the um, maps that were used in basically Campaign, Chaos Theory, or, well, yeah, both of those, and all of those maps are able to be used to have a pre-built layout set when starting a new challenge mode or a sandbox mode. It's specifically for challenge mode if you go into custom challenge mode. And the following maps that this is featuring is Isla Nublar 1993, San Diego, Isla Sorna, Isla Nublar 2015, Arizona, Washington State, Oregon, California, United Kingdom, Sierra Nevada, Dominion Bios and Expansion, San Ar Turris Dominion Malta Expansion, San Marie Dominion Malta Expansion, and San Diego Dominion Malta Expansion. All of these maps are ones from campaigns or um, chaos theories, except for the Biosyn map, strangely enough. But moving on, we actually have plenty of new decorations to go through, which the first set is three sets of banners which we have a fl regular base flag style for three, and we have two um, wooden ones, well, one that's like a natural wood, and one that's either a steel or um, painted wood, and each of the three for these three sections, which is weird to say multiple times, is for a different viewing dome. You have the regular viewing dome one, which features Brachiosaurus and, well, actually features the T-Rex and Stegosaurus. Also the Lagoon one, which of course features Lagoon species, and also the viewing log one, which is really nice, though I will say I do wish that they were a little bit more varied, but the fact that we do have like each of them with their own version and such, so we can vary them as we spread them out on our parks, is very nice. Also, along with decorations, we 
have the ultimate um, new inclusions of two large fountains, with the first one being a Spinosaurus skull featured one, which, gotta say, they have a weird fascination with using the Spinosaurus for all their fossil stuff. In the buildings, they have it as the only skull you can use. The first um, full skeleton we got in this game was the Spinosaurus. We eventually got T-Rex and Alamosaurus, but that's because of Jurassic Park's 30th anniversary. And we also have, like, the planter as well, if I'm not mistaken, and I think that's all of them. At least now, well, until we add this fountain, which, I gotta say, this makes me really want to, us to get, like, um, all the fossil stuff from the Lockwood Estate. Now, that would be cool and really co amazing to use for, like, a little museum section, along with maybe some murals that represent the little sections in the Lockwood Estate as well. You could get the Concavenator one, the Raptor Dilo one. Ooh, that would just be so nice to use. Also, we have another fountain as well, which is a little bit strange because this one is environment-based. However, it's not se selected for using in every environment. What I mean is, like, as you can see on the image of it, it showcases the palm tree of, like, the tropical and jungle environments. However, you can only use the one that is based in the biome. So if you're in an alpine environment, your fountain will only look like the alpine one, unlike with the rest of the scenery items where you can use every single one for every single biome which I think they might change this in an update. It's very likely, if not fully understandable, but it is kind of strange that that's one of the few in biome scenery items, kind of, that we don't have the ability to use each in a single map. Kind of weird, but moving on to other plants, we have two new sets of plants for each biome section. We have... I believe four. We have like the Mediterranean slash desert one. We have the jungle. We have the um. Uh, there's two others, which there's the alpine one, and I can't remember what the fourth one is. Which this one also like um the regular scenery items. You can use all of them in any map you do, as long as you're in one of the newer consoles or. PC, of course. If you're on a PS4 and such, you only get the two for the biome. So if you're in the tropical map, you'll only get the two tropical planters. And if we move on to the final few things, we'll first get into these beautiful blue sunbeds or uh, beach beds or whatever you want to call them. These are going to be very nice for making a little resort section for your parks and stuff. One thing that's not been easy to make entirely. However, it also helps with another sort of decoration which came in the Jurassic Park update, I believe. And that's the lonely parasols, or umbrellas, if whatever you want to call them, that just, like, are there. They don't really do anything, but now you can actually put them next to these benches and or sunbeds and you can have it as if they're like opened up, some of them are closed and absolutely nice, which really does help in completing two birds with one stone, I guess. Or and if we move on to the next decoration, the ultimate, the pin the Pierce of Resistance for us Jurassic fans, the pinnacle of our fan base for these kinds of games. We have bins and benches. That's right, guys. The JPOG fans can rest easy now. After two years of begging for this game only, forget the three years with the other g game, we now finally have what we wanted more than any dinosaur, more than any update or modification whatsoever, we've got the ultimates. Bins and benches. What is this fan base? I, I love it. I just, I got nothing, guys. Like, that's just so hilarious to me that, well, 20 years 
basically. Yeah, it has been 20 years since J-Pog came out. 20 years of us being in love with bins and benches. And, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like peop the guests will interact with them. But, who knows, maybe I am wrong. They might be able to once in a while. You might just have to get lucky. But, they are absolutely awesome to have for the parks. And, you know, just makes them more realistic, I guess. Having a bin around here and such. And also a compost bin as well. So, if you're making, like, a little back area for some of your guest facilities it'll work nicely there and also we have not only that we also have a picnic table which is quite a long picnic table and I gotta say is really really detailed and such nice whitewashed wood and such which I gotta say it also makes the um, white bench kind of look a little too clean and less textured if I'm being honest and stuff, but honestly, this is really nice and also helps with making a more camp section, which definitely is going to lead me to some ideas for certain speed build videos or tips videos, but that is the decorations, and we'll move on to the next section, which is capture mode changes, which this one is going to be great for us who love taking those weathered-based screenshots or, you know, changing the daytime. Because in challenge mode, we have two options. We have time of day and heather. That's right, not weather. But Heather, I, I, I think that's just a mistake, or it might be some in-joke for Frontier or something. I, I have no idea. I saw that, and I was like, I had to do a double take. It's like, uh, is that right? Um, uh, okay, it's right. We have Heather, which in capture mode, now you can actually change Heather, or as I'll call it realistically, the weather, and the time of day. I will say though, for the time of day, one thing that's a little unfortunate is that it's only like select times for those. So it's like the base position for night, the base position for dusk and dawn, and base p position for day, along with default. I wish it was like a gradual bar that you could like shift around so like you could get exactly the moment that you want. And for the weather, Whatever biome you're in, if you want it to be nice and sunny, you can keep it as such. Or if you want it to be blazing a storm, whether it's snow, sand. And so you, once you put those in the capture mode, they're there to stay as long as you want them. But as soon as you exit out of capture mode, it instantly goes back to regular scheduled weather. So if you have it like on the outside world, it's set to no storms, no trouble, no nothing. Not to worry, lads. As soon as you're out of capture mode, it'll go back to being a sunny day. And guys, that is all of the major stuff regarding the free update. There may have been some little minor things that I missed, like maybe there's a few... Um, specifics details on the ones that I already mentioned, but I think that covers the majority and such. And if there's anything I missed, I do apologize. But if you've enjoyed this video, I do want to say thank you for watching up to this point, and also to hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. And if you feel like I've deserved it, I would appreciate the like as well. And with this new DLC, guys, and new update, I want to ask one question as I asked in the other videos. Which species are you going to be using first for your parks? Is it going to be the Tarbosaurus, the Concavenator, the Utahraptor, or the Gigantoraptor? Leave in the comments which one you're using first. And if you feel like doing extra work in the comments, let me know what your idea for an enclosure you're going to do for that species is. Are you going to do something very sinister and eerie? Something highly secure? Or something a little more simple and such? Or more natural? Leave it all in the comments, guys. And until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.